Put your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, can I get a motion and a second to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. second. Something. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? Um, okay, we have adopted the agenda, and the agenda includes um, <coughs> staff presentation information, measures Y and Z, second quarterly construction update for 2016-17, measures T and U, second quarterly construction update for 2016-2017. Um, shall we just go to uh, Dr. Tom over there? Thank you, Madam President, esteemed board members, district cabinet, and to the hundreds of folks in the audience behind me tonight, <laughs> as well as the thousands of viewers out in the Torrance residential area. Um, as always, it's a pleasure and an honor to be the spokesperson for the design and construction group seated behind me, and we'll lead off tonight with Leo Romero from HMC to bring you up to speed on their projects. Good evening, members of the board. I'm Leo Romero with HMC Architects. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, and I will lead you off with Measure YZ, Modernization and New Construction. Jefferson Middle School, Yukon Elementary School, Edison Elementary School. Uh, currently, Jefferson Modernization is complete. Punch list and closeout is in progress. Yukon and Edison Modernization is also complete and science labs in progress. Punch list and closeout is in progress for both Yukon and Edison. For future projects, we have Jefferson Gymnasium. It would be uh, bidding uh, to the board, or bids to the board on February 2nd, or yeah, February 6, 2017. Schedule for construction would be spring 17th, uh, spring, oh, uh, sorry, spring 2017 through 2018. DSA projects are being closed with certification as we speak. Okay, hang on. I think we have a question, sure. Mr. Lee. This <laughs> might be for Tom or Don or somebody. Oh, okay. Um, when you did the, the security lighting at Jefferson, what I call the kindergarten building, but I don't know what they call it, the music building, the music room now, there's a light on the what would be the south east corner that seems to shine out into the neighborhood which managed to shine right into exactly my bedroom <laughs> <laughs> so i was kind of hoping that maybe along the way it would get adjusted but it does not seem to have gotten that way so anyway just kind of a note if somebody gets by there and hits it with a stone or something that it moves a little bit doesn't move much probably about that much but <laughs> And don't you feel safe and secure? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, anyway. So that's on the uh, east side of the building? I mean, on the east end? South. Southeast, Southeast corner Southeast, of that building. Yeah. There's, a, there's yeah. some security lighting, and it just seems to, yeah. when they put it in, it was just like, I'm going, okay, well, this is temporary, and this has never moved. So I thought maybe I would mention it. Okay. And actually, I just wanted to um, check, too, um, the Edison fence is now completed and back in condition for uh, students to be Don. in that yard. <laughs> yes, Don is saying yes. Okay, everybody appreciates the uh, work on that. Thank you. Okay, moving on to West High School and Richardson Middle School. West High School modernization on, and auditorium are currently out to bid right now. Uh, bids are expected on the 20th. Interim housing, uh, the board has approved it and should be going in over the uh, Christmas break. It's actually on the agenda tonight. The board's approving it tonight. Hopefully, board's approving it tonight. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Richardson um, Middle School modernization is in progress. Construction schedule is uh, December 16 or 2016 through December 2017. Future projects so will include uh, the West High School Modernization and Auditorium, which are currently out to bid. Board approval is ex expected on January 17th of 2017. Construction schedule will be February 2017th through December 2018th. Richardson Gym uh, bids are out to the board, will be, will be going out to the board on February 6th, 2017. 
any questions on West and Richardson? All right. And I'll turn it over to uh, Westberg and White. Good evening, board members. Uh, Torrance High School, under construction, the last uh, phase, uh, 8, 9, and 10, it's about 95% complete, completion in December. On the same school, we have buildings L and Q, which are the interior remodels of the mini gym and the auditorium. That's about 27% uh, under com uh, completion and should it wrap up in March or April next year. Any questions on that? Excuse me? How do you figure 27%? That's, pretty That's what the payout yeah, exactly. said, <laughs> of construction payout. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's all based on the materials that come in and the amount of construction that's done. And it's all okay. calculated. The software says 20. In the old days, we kind of guessed. <laughs> This well, says. Tom this and Don are old to remember the old days. You kind of guessed. Are, are we going to light the front of Torrance High School? It is lit. Well, driving here, it's not lit. The reason is, is that remember those, uh, that the, uh, the, there are lights on two poles, right where the steps are, and those are peak lights, so they have to be sent to a separate company to be referred. But we're not going to shine light up onto the building. We are not. Okay. But those lights will be on once they're back in place. Yeah. Carr, Lincoln Elementary Schools, and Casimir Middle School are the modernization project is complete. We're just going through the closeout process and the paperwork. On Lincoln and Carr, the two science mods are currently under construction. And they're around 50% uh, complete. Should be wrapping up in the next uh, month or two, hopefully. Any questions there? Anybody? Arnold, Anza, and Arlington Elementary Schools, they were just submitted to DSA about three weeks ago. I'm waiting to get the letter of acceptance from DSA. They've called me up and said they received everything. So I'm just waiting for that letter to come in to forward to the district. Uh, construction for that is to be start next summer in June and go through the summer months. And it's TNU. Let me follow up on the aquatics sure. right away. Aquatics is under construction. Uh, we're again about 6% complete. It's still uh, uh, underground utilities going on. We're working with Edison, working through that process, getting uh, a lot of those utilities taken care of and uh, just kind of moving through the process. That again is supposed to be completed in September of 2017. Dr. So a lot Steve of... Ford, why don't you talk a little bit about the, the electric shutdown? Sure. Um, Thanks, mm -hmm. After uh, quite a bit of planning, Edison is finally doing the first shutdown tomorrow. It shuts down the neighbor's neighborhood next to it and also Sherry uh, we're the district supplying temporary power for that site while the shutdown's happening. And then we've got a second shutdown on Monday. And that'll get rid of all the power going through our area. They'll pull the wire probably Tuesday and Wednesday, the old wire out, and then we can go in and start digging. So it's taken a long time to get to this point, but we're finally there. So how long will the neighborhood be without power? Uh, half a day. Oh, we'll be hits there, won't we? Okay. Yeah. We've been duly warned and they have that, notified, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's, that's what's taken so long. They had a 45-day window to yep. plan and notify and all that. So then, so then that'll be the two shutdowns, and then by the end of the month, you'll have power out there. Mm. Well, there's already power. They're just rerouting it. Yeah. Yeah. This is just making it so we can dig the hole. So while power's out, everyone's got a picture of Tom. Phone number. <coughs> no, the superintendent. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll refer to the Edison. <laughs> that, there you go. Um, I just had a question. The Sherry, will there have a generator? I yes. guess there will be a generator. Okay. Both days. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions on the aquatic facility? We're digging a hole there, huh? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Just. Thank you, Mr. Thank Rondo. You.
The other elements of TNU that we have up on the presentation are the middle school gymnasiums. We spoke to Jefferson, Casimir, and Richardson. We'll bring back to the board with the rebid of the new design. Uh, and the high school auditorium, the first of the ground ups is actually going into the West High modernization, and those are currently bidding as well. Uh, safety and security portion, uh, fencing phase one is complete. Uh, phase two is bidding. It's on the agenda. For tonight, okay. Uh, surveillance is in progress. We now have the point of entry security system design uh, that's rolling out. And Mr. Mara, would you like to speak of the money that you've already spent for technology? It's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps the meeting up. <laughs> the, uh, the 2,880 Chromebooks and carts that you approved a few weeks ago will all be delivered by the end of this week. So it's being phased in. There have been several carts already delivered to the schools, and uh, that's it. They'll, they're all happy, it seems, that they've, they've received some more devices. And then the schools have continued to purchase uh, devices on their own using some of their own on-site funding. So. That's it. And yeah, and uh, I'm, uh, Dr. Madden says I have to wait till 2020 to do anything else. And TUSD owns the majority of those uh, Chromebooks, is that right, Mr. Marr? Yes. These were the reason I ask that is because um, one of the topics of discussion at uh, our California School Board's conference was the potential for upcoming charters in many school districts that have perhaps not previously had them. And um, I guess some districts have had interesting interactions with charters in their area that if the district owns certain resources for the regular public education kids, they have to also provide those resources for the charter school kids too, which was interesting to me. I didn't actually understand that that was going to be a requirement. Some school districts it's being enforced and some it's not, so it's not being consistent, but something to think about. Yeah, I... Yeah, new not, for me too. New, new for me yeah. and I'll... Follow your lead. Yeah, hadn't heard of it before. Mrs. Deutsch. I just <clears throat> wanted to get an update on the replacement for Zangle. How is that coming along? Oh, yeah. Uh, we're on schedule. And <laughs> actually, this week, we started our first set of training. Uh, we call it the initial product training. Mm -hmm. So it's four straight days, and we have 17 people who've been, we started today upstairs in, the, in, our, in our office. Um, and these are the folks that we half of the folks are my own staff and the other half are a cross-section of positions from around the district admin clerical staff uh, folks in language assessment and uh, a FWEC downstairs and the intent is uh, literally getting them initially trained and possibly sending them out since they'll they're going to be considered sort of the experts in the beginning and to be able to re-deliver the training to so uh, we've done a lot of data work <laughs> it's it's a lot of work there's uh, massive amounts of data that we're mapping over from Zangle over to PowerSchool we have several servers that run as a training server a development server a data server so that we can <coughs> pump data in and we actually have uh, schedules uh, staff courses already in some of our development servers so we're doing a lot of testing uh, and looking at uh, it, it's easy to just put the data in it's another thing to do the data validation so it's, it's it looks great but until the folks who understand their own data till they start looking at it we really don't know I mean it looks good to me because I it's just data but until language assessment looks at uh, the English learner module and says yeah you know what that's not how many RFEPs we have or LTELs we have so until they actually start once they learn how to look at their data or actually once they learn how to look at the product look at PowerSchool uh, then they can start reporting and, and pulling data out to validate and verify the, the data otherwise you know to the IT team it, it looks good to us but un until the the real you know the, the the real end users look at it uh we we don't know but i'm pretty 
be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When do we do to go live? Uh, September 7th, 8th, yeah, 2017. Our, we'll, of course, we'll, we'll be live in the summer with the, the real system, live in terms of when the teachers will take attendance, log on. Uh, the system will generate the schedules. Obviously, we have to have all the schedules uh, completed and finished in the summer next year so that we can uh, start the school year. <coughs> will this include the, enroll the registration, the online registration? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's uh, another big piece. Mm -hmm. That one's huge because we have to take our paper enrollment packet and then convert that over into a, a, a digital form. And what we're finding, it's not difficult, but what we have is the, the one that's a little, quite a bit is our health history form. Uh, once I got a hold of that paper form, you kind of look at it and, you know, like, wow, there's a lot of stuff on, on there. And we'll need to customize PowerSchool quite a bit in order to capture some of those fields because that's internal to us. These are questions we ask on the health history form. And that's why uh, PowerSchool allows you to do that. It's really flexible. It's kind of open-ended. It's, you know, whatever you want it to do, it'll do. We just need to know that these are the questions we are going to ask. So uh, I spoke to, I think it's Heidi Carl, our, our district nurse. Mm -hmm. And just I ran the form by her. And she said they're going to change it a little bit. So I'm kind of waiting. Uh, once we make those changes, then we'll, that'll be part of the enrollment and registration piece online. If my wife runs up and gives you a great big hug in September, it's because she didn't have to fill out those forms times three. <laughs> I'm the only one with kids left in school, and it's a really painful couple weeks when we do those forms. So, um, Yeah, like I said, really I didn't have enough that. kids. My last, my last one, I, I'm going to miss the 21st century. <laughs> You're going to be real popular with a lot of people not having to do those forms. So. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be really nice. We what we have to do, you know, because it won't be ready for this coming kindergarten registration. We'll have to do a lot in Zangle first, mm. right? There's going to be this transition period. Gotcha. Uh, we're looking at having the, the power school registration up and running for incoming kids in the fall, but for existing students, uh, it's just more renewing. You know, you're going on there and and uh, you know validating the information. We have a lot to do to get the word out to the parents, <coughs> set up their accounts in the parent portal, right? They need to receive their student access code so that they can tie their, so they'll get letters, they'll tie their students, their kids, uh, to their account so that they can see their, their kids' information, grades, attendance, all that good stuff. So, yeah, there's still, you know, it's a little nerve-wracking. It's already next year. It's January, right? And we have a few months to go, but a lot to do. But based on the project timeline, we're on schedule. I don't want to jinx this and say we're ahead. There are a couple areas where we're ahead, and there are a couple areas where we're, we know we have still a lot of work to do. OK, thanks. Yeah. Any other Thank questions? you, Joe. That's all we have to report. Before Unless you have additional Tongo? questions for Don Rondo. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing for Don? No. Have a safe and happy holiday. Thanks. Thank you. Same to you. Same to you. Okay. Uh, thanks for all that information. I hope that helps our public uh, get up to speed, too. And we do have actually a couple of discussion action items on our agenda this evening. The first is approval to award bid number 13. So moved. <laughs> For the West High School Interim Housing Project. <laughs> Second. Uh, any questions? Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the uh, and award the bid for that interim housing project. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next is approval to award bid number 11-11.29.16, Security Fencing Project, Phase 2, Rebid to Fence Corporation. So, so moved. moved. Second. second. It's been Very moved good. and seconded that we approve that bid for the um, Security Fencing Project. 
All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. How right, about number eight? Oh boy. Yeah, How about I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <laughs> Thank you.